You ever wake up and just wanted to make a light tube for less than a hundred dollars? So I've been watching some YouTube and I've seen some people have those cool tube lights in the background and I figure oh, I could probably buy like a nice six foot one, put it in the corner, good to go. And then I look it up and it's about $300 for four feet of tubes for like the Nanlite Pavo tubes. That's crazy. Okay, so then I thought, fine, maybe it's just Nanlite. Maybe they're just the ones that are really expensive. So I looked for some other brands and I thought they can't be that expensive. And they're not if you just want like a foot of RGB light, but to get a six foot light, it's still kind of expensive. So then I had a brilliant idea. Why don't I just make my own? So yeah, like there's no way a tube full of RGB lights is $300. There's just no way. Now, how am I gonna make my own? Okay, you gotta figure. Now, before we embark on a big project, it's always a good idea to make sure that all of the parts work individually before we put them together. So the tube just has to uh, be a tube. Parchment paper just needs to diffuse. Tube end caps just need to cap things. Lights should probably work. We should test these first. Go ahead and check your RGB lights. Make sure there are no dead spots. And these look pretty good to me. And just for kicks, I also decided to pull out the parchment paper and check the diffusion there. And that is looking about the way I want it. Then go ahead and pull out enough parchment paper so you have a little bit extra hanging off of both sides of the tube. Try and make sure you don't fold it unnecessarily. It'll show up as dark spots in the diffusion later on. Then go ahead and let it roll back on itself. And then pull outwards from the center so that you'll make it longer and then start twisting it in your hands to tighten the whole roll down. What you want to do is try and make a tube a little bit longer than the tube that you already have. And then once you do that, go ahead and try and thread it through. If it ends up getting stuck, then you'll just want to pull a little bit out at a time, tighten it down and keep pushing it on through. Just keep at it and you'll eventually get it. Now, if you get it all the way through and you find that you wound it a little too tight and it's not quite matching the inside diameter, don't worry. Go ahead and pull some of it out and start twisting it back in the opposite direction so that it fills the inside diameter. And once you do this on both sides, eventually it will even out again. After that, go ahead and thread your strip light through. If it ends up getting stuck, just pull one end up and start shimming it down the other side and then connect everything together and make sure that it's giving you all that tube light goodness. And that looks pretty good, looking like a tube light to me. I did notice that where the parchment paper sort of folded in back on itself that it did give some off shadows here and there, but I figured it wouldn't show up that well on camera and since it was just background set dressing anyway that I was okay with it. Now it's time to trim and clean up the ends. I'm going to take the extra bits of parchment paper and cut them into little strips and then fold them back over the tube and tape them down. Now this serves two purposes. It's going to clean up the end so that the end caps have a little something to grip onto and it's also going to anchor the parchment paper so that it doesn't begin to slide over time. Now you see that I'm using two pieces of tape here and that is because one, it's parchment paper. Uh, it's meant so that nothing is really sticking to it. So one piece of tape was just to sort of hold it down and the other piece of tape was meant to secure it in place. The tape is gonna stick better to itself than it will to the parchment paper. And then just trim off some of the excess here and it should be all nice and clean and you're ready for the next step. Now go ahead and take your end cap and with a sharp pair of scissors or a knife, go ahead and cut two vertical slits next to each other. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like a little puppy nose. 
Then go ahead and thread your RGB strip light from the inside out and then from the outside in so that you get a nice little anchor at the end there. If you want to and have enough strip light left, go ahead and thread the other portion of the strip light through the tube so you get two strands running down. If not, go ahead and cut it where it indicates on the strip light, and you always want to do this where it indicates, otherwise you may have some diodes that will not work. Then go ahead and take some of the backing off and stick it to itself, and you should have a nice anchor. And all you have to do is squeeze the end cap back on, and this side is done. Now go ahead and repeat those steps on the other side too, although you'll just have to make one slit on that end cap. Plug it all up and make sure everything works, and you should be left with $60 worth of tube light goodness. Now you want to go ahead and pull as much slack as you can from that strip light, otherwise you'll be able to see the individual diodes. And voila! For just $60 and one hour's worth of your time, you get a very decent looking tube light. And once you turn out all the lights, it looks even better. Now if you are trying to capture this light, or any light on camera really, you'll have to worry about not making the shutter speed match the frequency of the flicker uh, of the LED lights themselves, otherwise you start to get a little bit of banding like that. Not bad! And so, the million dollar question, or I guess $300 question. Why would you spend $300 on a tube light when you could spend 60 bucks and an hour of your time? Well, for one, portability. The Nanlite Pablo tubes have their own built-in battery, so once they're charged up, you can take them anywhere, hold them above your head, put them on a table, move them around, and that's fine. The one that I made always has to be plugged into a wall. So, that's one downside. Another one is extensibility. The Papa tubes can actually connect together, so you could string a bunch of those lights together and make them work. Um, I suppose you technically could. There, you can splice the RGB strips together, but then that just just a lot more work. And at that point, I think you might as well just save up and buy some more expensive lights um, because it'll work better. It'll be a little more reliable. Um, but if you really don't want to and you just enjoy tinkering with things, it is possible. And obviously quality. The Nanlite Pava tubes are going to come with a manufacturer's warranty. The craftsmanship is going to be better. The materials are going to be better. For example, the tube that I got from Amazon is polycarbonate and that scratches really easily. And actually when I got it in the cardboard box, the paper wrapping that they had around it actually scratched the tube. Um, this is not really evident once you put the uh, parchment paper diffusion through it and the light is shining through it. You definitely don't see it, but it's not as nice and consistent as uh, the the opaqueness of the tubing in like the Nanlite Pava tubes. It's, it's a, a lot like this, actually, this lightsaber. Look how consistent and clear that is. It's not splotchy, there's nothing to overlap and add shadow, but the one that I made is also one-fifth of the price of a single four-foot Nanlite Pava tube. It also depends on your application. Are you using this thing every day? Do you need to move it around? Do you need all the finer controls? Then probably put that 60 bucks in your piggy bank and go ahead and save up for a more professional light tube. But if you're just using it as background set dressing or you just need some cool lights in your room, 60 bucks, one hour's worth of your time, totally worth it in my opinion. Thanks for watching guys. Certainly there are things that could be improved on, on what I did. If you've already made some yourself, let me know in the comments what you did differently. I'd love to see how it turned out. And all the materials that I use will be linked in the description below, as well as the Nanlite Pava tubes that I referenced, just in case you looked at mine and said, man, that thing sucks. As always, comments, likes, and subs are appreciated guys, and consider supporting me on Patreon, but until next time, geek out.